Hey everybody, what's it Fox Gaming here? I've got an updated PvP build video for you today. Welcome to Support Tank 2.0. You may remember I built a True Patriot tank build with Vanguard and uh, Protector not too long ago because I felt that that offered a lot of benefits to my team in terms of the bonus armor and it really um, gave sort of a lot of advantages to my Intimidate users. Now that build is still very strong but I have updated it because my team have now moved a lot more towards the Spotter in Sync um, <clears throat> builds uh, and occasionally we get an Eclipse user in with us as well. What I will say is if you are running as a four stack and particularly if you're coming up against some very sweaty opponents this build will completely turn your game around. I promise you that if you have one of these in your team and everybody else on some form of high DPS build be it skill or um, you know status or, or weapon damage you will have a fantastic game and whilst your own personal stats might not show 15 kills and zero deaths what you will show is one of the highest damages in the lobby even though you're on a six blue tank build but more importantly there is so much synergy with this build that you are offering to your team that it's not just for you and it's not just there to provide tardigrade great bonus armor there's a multitude of ways that you're helping your teammates out so the reason i came up with the first version of this build and <clears throat> subsequently updated it to the version you see before you today is because every time i see a team that has a tardigrade great tank they usually do very well However, the guy running Tardigrade typically has a, a relatively subpar build, in my personal opinion. They'll just be running six blues, maybe like a couple of Badger Tough, um, some Gilleran, maybe three Golans. They just like to maximise the, you know, you keep getting the 5% armour with those pieces to get their armour to like 2.1 million. So all they're trying to do is get their armour as high as possible, maybe throw a bit of Hazard or a bit of uh, armour region in there. And their main goal is to give their team the Tardigrade proc. I didn't want to be the tank that just does that. I don't want to be the guy that just is there to give everybody a little bit of extra life every 45 seconds. What I want to do is offer a load of other benefits. And I promise you, if you update, if you have a tank build or you, one of your buddies plays one and you get them to update it to this, your yeah, everybody's damage in the lobby, everybody's damage will increase, not just the tanks. So let's explain some of the changes and some of the synergy with this build. If you don't know um, Tardigrade, uh, it drops from True Sun's missions, and it gives us in PvP. If we switch that there, whenever you are, you are, excuse me, whenever your or any ally armor breaks, they gain 40% of your armor as bonus armor for 10 seconds, and that is a cooldown of 45 seconds per ally. So instead of them dying, they instead come back with 40% of 1.8 million, and um, which is quite strong, particularly if they are running Intimidate, because bonus armor is what works with Intimidate, and it can really turn their 1v1 around. But even if they're not running that, it means that they can get out of jail free, essentially. It's a nice little uh, you know, way to get out of a sticky situation. Well, we are also running as four-piece True Patriot. Now, I believe, and again, this is my own opinion, that True Patriot is the single best tank set that you can run in the game at the moment. Foundry, to me, is dead. All it does is give you a stronger shield, a bit of armor regen, and 10% armor. What do all those things say to me? That's a selfish tank play. All of those things only buff the tank play themselves. And a good tank will position well and try and um, open up opportunities for their team. They'll try and take some of the fire whilst providing um, <clears throat> some utility to their team. And that's where True Patriot absolutely shines. Now the two and three piece aren't relevant here, at least not for this part. They are relevant for our own personal damage and I will come into that in a second. Um, you may already notice I'm running some interesting weapon choices here with some interesting talents. but. That all makes sense in a second, I promise you. Um, what we're focusing on here is the four piece, red, white and blue. Every two seconds enemies you shoot receive a stacking debuff of red, white and blue. Red amplifies the damage that an enemy takes by 8%. And because that's amplified, that means it's multiplicative damage. So it's calculated at the end of the equation, not off the base damage. That means if your teammates are already being buffed by other things, they've got buffs on their weapons, buffs on their gear. This 8% is on top of all of that. So it's just a, an awesome, awesome damage buff or damage resistance debuff to your enemy, should I say. Why? Um, shooting an enemy repairs the attacking agent's armor by 2% once every second. This has been fixed. It now works with all of your team. So not only are your guys doing um, more damage to the person that you're shooting into, but they're actually healing off of them as well. And finally, blue decreases the enemy's damage dealt by 8%. So on top of all of that, the enemy that is shooting back into them, or usually into me, because I'm the tank of the front lines, will be dealing less damage. So it is very important when playing a tank build that your teammates understand that they need to be shooting um, what I call the painted guys. I say painted as in like I've painted them with the full flag. Um, but as long as they're shooting into flagged enemies, that's extremely important because otherwise your job as a frontline tank will be wasted and you'll just be relegated back to one of those Tardigrade tanks that I was talking about earlier where you've just got loads of armour purely for the Tardigrade proc. 
<clears throat> if you are running this as a four stack, which is probably the best place to run it, I wouldn't recommend running this outside of a group. Um, it is very important that your teammates shoot into who you are shooting into because you are offering so many debuffs and obviously as a 1v1 capability as somebody with 6 blues will always be a little bit lower than a high damage build. So that's why True Patriot is fantastic. I have gotten many kills with this full, full flag. In fact, I think it was yesterday or the day before we killed 3 agents by just shooting one guy. I was able to fully flag up one of the tanks and my teammates finished him off with their LMG build and he was able to completely kill two other players because enemies under full flag um, create an explosion that's the, uh, equal to their entire health. I don't know if it's different for PvP. No, I guess not. Um, so if you, if you if it's a tanky guy that explodes and he's next to two squishy guys, they're all going to die and it's hilarious. Um, and the good news is that gave me the kills as well. So that was pretty awesome. Not, not that important with this build. It's more about the red, white and blue. The other way that we are buffing our teammates' damage, we're already giving our teammates the 8% uh, multiplicative damage to enemies that we shoot. We are using Demolitionist, which gives 5% damage to targets out of cover. Now, most people in PvP will just use Firewall. Uh, occasionally, they might use Technician um, for the Spotter build and sometimes Survivalist for an Eclipse build. Nobody really seems to use Demolitionist. What it offers you is your entire team, including yourself, that additional 5% do damage to targets out of cover and that is also a multiplicative bonus so just by having this equipped we are giving our team um, more damage 5% more damage to be precise there is a reason this is really good for your own playstyle as well and I'll go through that in just a second <clears throat> and then the final way that we are offering additional utility to our team is via opportunistic now I decided to run with the Badger Tough Backpack here because Opportunistic requires either a shotgun or a marksman rifle and I don't want to use a marksman rifle in PvP especially since they've been heavily nerfed. Enemies you hit with shotguns and marksman rifles amplifies the damage they take by 10% from all sources for 5 seconds. So this is once again a multiplicative damage. This is on top of all the damage buffs that your team already have. So we're, we're giving them 8% from True Patriot, 5% from Demolitionist and 10% from uh, the opportunistic all at the same time. <clears throat> it's fantastic. There's so much utility here. What I've done here is spec this backpack into critical hit chance. And if you look across the board, every single piece is armor and critical hit chance. Now, I appreciate you might not be quite as lucky as me with some of these rolls, but as long as you get these two things as high as possible, the armor is important for the tardigrade, grade and the critical hit chance is important for the next part of this build. So these are all the ways that we're buffing our team there. Now let's explain how we're buffing our own damage so you're not just a useless tank that can't actually kill anybody. Because this is a What's It Fox gaming build, as you all know I like to buff the strengths of a build whilst reducing its weaknesses. The weakness of a tank build is of course damage. Now we're obviously giving all of these buffs to our team and to ourselves. What I have decided to do is run with a strained weapon. And you may think that's really strange, I'm using two relatively sort of high rate of fire, low mag count weapons. What weapons you use doesn't make a difference, but you want to test this out yourself. Strained is a really good talent to buff your challenge, to buff, <laughs> excuse me, to buff your damage even. What on earth was that? If you are running True Patriot, because if you look over here, the three piece bonus gives us 30% magazine size. Strained, whoops, it gives us 10% additional critical hit damage for every 0.5 seconds we're firing, and this stacks up to five times, 50%. So obviously the more bullets in our mag, the longer we can stay in the max part of that. Let me demonstrate that now by shooting into this, uh, this angry pond. So if you look on the side of my gun there, you'll see it says zero, and that'll obviously go zero, one, two, three, four, and eventually five every 0.5 seconds. Um, of course, the zero five is 50%. So let's see how long that we are in that 50%. Now, I don't know about you, but I counted 22 bullets there, so nearly half of my mag, just about 40% of my mag, is at the max cap there. If you don't have True Patriot, it's going to be more like 5%. It's going to be the final few bullets. Let's try the shotgun. I like the ACS here because it just has loads of ammo and it's benefited more by strains. So again, let's see when it hits that 0.5 and how much longer we can continue firing. Quite a long time, right? So that is why I run strained. With all of the critical hit chance that I've stacked onto every single piece here, if we go over to my stats, you'll see that I am at 60%, but my critical hit damage is 65%. That's on the foul. If we look at the shotgun, it's pretty similar, to be fair. It's not much different at all. <clears throat> so all we're now doing on this critical hit damage is adding an additional 50% on top of that, or working our way up to it, and then maintaining there. So it's a great way to buff your own damage. 
Uh, now there are other choices, you could run things like Optimist here, but I promise you if you run Strained as a tank, because you're doing less damage, you're going to be firing more often, and therefore building up your damage quicker, and it does catch people off guard. So try it out, it's really strong. Another advantage of Demolitionist is if somebody breaks your armour, whatever weapon is in your hand at the time, instantly refills its own mag and without interrupted fire. So all of a sudden you could have an additional 50 bullets in your foul, whatever weapon you choose, um, to continue firing at that max 50%. Um, what I tend to do at that stage is I pop out my shield and the good news for Strained is you can have a little bit of an interruption when you pop out your shield and you don't actually lose the buff. I will demonstrate that now. Watch the numbers at the sides. Oh, no, that's actually not true. Okay, I swear I used to be able to do that. They must have patched that. Okay, entirely, entirely ignore that previous statement. I, s I think you can interrupt your fire slightly. Oh, we're very... Okay, yeah, you can, but with very little... Okay, that's, that's what I was thinking of. So you can let go of the trigger for very small periods of time. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So that's what I was thinking of there. Okay, so ignore that with the shield. The shield you still want to run because that does give you the extra level of tankiness. But if you're in a situation where you're running strained, you've got your shield up and somebody breaks your armour, it instantly refills your weapon, which allows you to do more damage. So that's one of the reasons why Demolitionist is strong. EMP is important because as a tank, you're going to be in the front lines. It's your job to break down skills. But honestly, you can run whatever secondary skill here you want. Pulse is also really popular to help give your teammates that extra information. Um, you know, it doesn't really make a difference here. You could even potentially switch just to have the True Patriot backpack to buff it by 12% damage from 8% and then run a Night Watcher to pulse more, but I wouldn't recommend that. I used to run a similar build, and I promise you that running Opportunistic with a, an ACS with Strained is the best way to buff not only your own damage, but your team's damage as well. So I hope that's explained all of the sort of benefits to not only your team, but your own gameplay. We have a lot of incoming, or sorry, outgoing damage for ourselves. Um, you know, via the, the, well, first of all, by using good weapons, so a foul and, a, and an ACS-12. Um, but I've chosen those specifically because they work well with Strained when they have the additional 30%. We've got all of the extra damage debuffs that we are applying to our opposition, so the True Patriot 8%, the, um, uh, the Demolitionist 5%, and the Opportunistic 10%, so they all work really well as well. And on top of all of that, we've still got the Tardigrade to fall back on. So there are so many ways that we're offering that utility to our team. Now, I will tell you now, this doesn't work well in solo queue. Um, the whole point of this build is you need to be calling out to your team when an enemy is... I always call it fully painted, but when an enemy is fully flagged. So your teammates, they need to be shooting into that guy because you applying all of these debuffs only to benefit yourself is not the point of this build. The point of it is team shoot, team shoot, team shoot. And in solo queue, that just doesn't happen. So what I'm going to try and do here, instead of being frontline, is actually sit a little bit further back, pay attention to who my enemy is shooting into, and then, well, hopefully help them kill them. <clears throat> so this is the build. This is the very build that I bring out whenever we have sweaty games. Whenever we're playing as a four stack, we come up against another four, and honestly, it completely turns the tide. It's just fantastic. You know, your teammates just all of a sudden hitting their crits and everything else so much harder. And then if they do get in a, in a bit of trouble, having that big Tardigrade proc from your 1.8 million armoured tank, it, yeah, it's just fantastic. General rule of thumb is um, use your AR from distance and obviously use your shotgun up close. Yes, you're gaining more damage. Um, and giving your team more damage with the shotgun because of course you're proccing opportunistic um, but you know this this foul hits hard it's my favorite AR in the game you can use whichever one you want all I would do is the strained test that I just performed there so just go shoot a pond somewhere check when it gets to zero five and see how much longer it is if you're only getting about 10 15 percent of your mag at 50 percent before it runs out you don't want to run strained if you can hit that 30 to 40 percent that I've been hitting and you do want to be running strain with this build. So I even tried on a FAMAS. Even a FAMAS at 900 RPM, you still get about 20-25% of the mag at that extra 50% critical hit damage. And that's fine. That would you know, that would work absolutely perfectly. Pick a weapon that you are comfortable with. I would still recommend the ACS-12 because it spams like crazy. The reload is minimal. And a lot of other shotguns in the game, you spend too long reloading, which means not enough time applying opportunistic. So the one thing I would say you do need to keep is the ACS. Right, let's follow this guy. Do you see the flag symbol above my head there? <clears throat> or above my shoulder, should I say? That's not my head, is it?
Okay, looks like this my boy's going for a big flank. I like his style. Oh no, we've been given away. Anyone else there? Good kill. So just by me being in this lobby, I'm giving this guy 5% extra damage to target that cover. So see this guy's fully flagged, it's going to blow up now. Perfect. I'm going to get in close to this guy. Shotgun. Take some hits for him. So if I'm taking the hits, this guy isn't. Ah, oh, that's a shame we didn't have our teammates there. <clears throat> so that's the correct play style there. Um, my clan do what we call the swap in, swap out method, which is if somebody say on this corner here firing at one of my DPS guys and they take a bit of hits, I'll call for the swap out and I will swap in his place because, you know, if you're a guy and you're shooting somebody on a corner and that guy is weak, you're probably going to push him. What you don't expect to see all of a sudden is a full health other player that's taking his exact space when you yourself are probably taking some damage. Um, so, you know, that's a really effective way to play tank is you can let your team take the front line. But definitely you want to be swapping in and swapping out. Oh no! That's a bad day to be those guys. <laughs> hmm, we're not really getting that much opportunity to see people here. Oh. Shield out. Ah. So I did quite a lot of damage to those guys just without the. Uh, I think one of my guys starts shooting them back towards the end there. So yeah, you know, in a 1v1, if they're running high DPS and you're that close for a shotgun, there's a good chance you're going to get hurt. And this is why I'm saying, you know, this is a solo game, so please don't judge the build based off of my performance. Because I promise you, if you put this in your team play, you will absolutely excel. Like any one of you will absolutely excel with this build. Um, in solo it is hard because uh, you know you want to be swapping in swapping Rogue out drone nobody detective. here no um, and it, yeah it's, it's a bit more hard to be coordinated um, in a team where you're not in comms or should I say when you're not in a team when you're just solo queuing so just bear that in mind um, I don't encourage you doing what I'm doing the only reason I'm solo queuing here is because very few of my clan mates are on um, and I want to show you guys this build as soon as possible because I love it I use this in all of my sweaty games now like and, and I'm a big DPS player I like getting big kills um, but I've got to say with this build, so I did a lot of damage then. You see the, the numbers are really ramping up. The fight continues. There are no more rogue reinforcements. They're going to spawn here. I don't think they are. No. Okay, cool. Yeah, I've got my floating numbers on there. So, um, you know, have a look and see how much that quickly the numbers ramp up. There are other talents that you can use here. You don't have to use strained if you don't want. If you do want to mix it up, by all means, go for it. As a tank build, you are less bound by your weapon choice. The most important thing is to have the shotgun. Um, and, uh, you know, as I said before, ideally in ACS-12, so you can just spray everywhere, even from range, and apply opportunistic, because that's 10% multiplicative damage. Oh, he got away. A little trick for this one just here. If you jump up here, you can jump straight down. I'm going to have my team going to support me a little bit here now. Right, let's pull out. Talk to me, dude. Talk to me. Oh, move out the way. On F. Why did I just fall? Ah, oh, I guess if a guy spawned back in again. Yeah, he come from behind us. For some reason, that guy with low health wasn't too, didn't seem to be taking any damage at all there, which was really weird. He just was stuck at the bottom part of his health. I'm not sure what that was all about. Never mind. We got a little bit funneled there, which is a shame. Still, we've uh, done pretty well against this team. But yeah, that play there was the right play. I'd probably forgotten that the guy was... Um, coming in from our right to spawn there, but I, I instantly dodge roll to take the hits of my teammate and as a result he survived. Normally here I'd be calling out to my team exactly where these guys are. Obviously, so I can't do that. 
But you should have my shield up here to be fair, shouldn't I? Where are these? There we go. So you can see the damage numbers really ramping up there. <clears throat> and that's a good thing with this this much armor and a big tanky shield, which for some reason I decided not to pull out there because I'm stupid. Um, you can tank so much damage for your team. A lot of the time when I die, I'll see all four players, um, and they've all done a couple of million each. So just think, you're taking all that damage that your three squishy DPS don't have to, and you can take enough damage that could kill three other people, and that's kind of the point. There is nothing wrong with dying on a tank build if you're taking enough damage and offering um, enough utility to your team before you do so. Because if your team can just clear up, and it ends up with you being the only person on your team that dies, but your team killing two, three, four people... Well, that's obviously fine, because it's, you know, it's a numbers game at the end of the day. Oh, no, I guess we're doing that game, are we? Are they in there? It's one player. Shotgun time, baby! Ah, ha, ha, ha. I just wanted to get him flagged up. So, again, in that situation there, I was happy to run in there, get him fully flagged. It's a bit of an interesting game, but... You know, I'll say it time and time again, don't judge the build on my gameplay, particularly because I usually do this as a live stream, I'm usually solo queuing, I'm not usually in comms with anyone because I'm talking to you guys, so um, where this build really shines, and I will try and get some footage uploaded for you um, this week actually, so I'm going to show you guys some conflict gameplay that's just raw footage of me in comms with my teams, I won't be addressing you all, it will just be a standard conflict game, and I'll show you where this build really shines, but try it out for yourself, run it with your team, Honestly, you'll love it. Just play smart. Um, you know, do the swap in, swap out method. If your teammates are in front and they're taking a bit of damage, just tell them to, to swap with you. You swap places with them. You apply all those debuffs. Your teammate heals up, comes back again, and absolutely destroys all your other teammates' flank. Because enemies take so long to kill you, it just allows your team to get in better positions and take advantage of all of those extra damage buffs that you are applying. Right then, let's have a look at the damage, shall we? <clears throat> so, four deaths... Uh, four kills and four assists. So I'm going to count that as profit. That's that's profit to me. 18 million damage, which is the second highest uh, on my team. So, you know, considering I'm running six blues, that's actually not as bad as uh, I expected. Our top guy had a really good game there, which is which is nice to see. Actually, to be fair, um, so did the second down guy. But, yeah, so this is the point. You're enabling your strong DPS to become even stronger. So uh, Try it out. Let me know what you think. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on this build. Put it together, try it with a team, and let me know if you have a lot more success against those sweaty four stacks that you're coming up against. So we'll call the video quits there. Thank you very much for sticking through to the end. I know this was a little bit of a long one, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.